Previously on Opinionville, a whole lot of crap happened. Reverend Pone has a stolen time machine. Professor Dunderhead made the boys swallow some weird techno thing that gave them amnesia. Just a whole bunch of crap. Oh yeah, and there's a murderous sheep named Orf who's become Reverend Pone's flunky slash hitman. I think that pretty much covers it. And the iguanas were last seen driving north. Also in the news, the long-anticipated and heavily advertised Pone Ark experience is having its grand opening at noon. Reverend Eustace Pone, the disgraced former megachurch evangelist and owner of the Bible-themed fun park, released this statement. Quote, This is your last chance, sinners. Come to the grand opening, or the punishment you shall receive will frighten and disgust Satan himself. So... That's a thing that's happening today. All right, where is he? I reserve time in my hectic schedule to come here. So do I, but you don't see me complaining. You're late all the time, Fundy. Au contraire, mon frere. I am always on time. I am a professional. I take this show seriously. To quote Gandhi, bullshit. How about the time you wanted not to come to the garage and tried to do it via phone? Okay, except that time. Or the time you dressed up a homeless person to look like you and do the show? The lady needed the money. I was doing charity. And there was that time you made that cheap cardboard cutout of yourself. Cardboard Fundy Monster would have been a breakout character if you guys had given him half a chance. Okay, I'm here. Sorry I'm late. Where were you? Did you get into some kind of D&D &D argument with a sweaty virgin on YouTube? I'm pleading the fifth. Ha! I knew it! Nerd! Yeah, newsflash. I'm a nerd. No, 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 no. You missed the subtle inflection of my voice. Let me take another run at it. Nerd! Nope, still not catching what you're pitching, Fundy. I must be doing something wrong. Um, I think Fundy's trying to insult you. He is? Yeah, that's why I was calling you a nerd. Oh, I get it now. I just had to pretend that it was 1989. Sick burn, Fundy. It was a sick burn. How dare you nerds reclaim the insult words us winners use. Oh, feel free to use it all you like. It says more about you than it does about me. Yeah, it says, look at that funny dude. He's so awesome and smart and right all the time and handsome and I bet he's really good in bed. No, it doesn't. It says, hey, look at that sad dude clinging to a time when he could injure somebody with language. Yeah, ever notice that the people who still use the word nerd as a serious insult are former bullies and jocks from high school? Eh, yeah, those poor guys deserve our pity. Pity? But we're the cool kids. We'll always be the cool kids. Sure you will. Now, what's the topic today? Um, YouTube drama. Again? Yeah, haven't we done YouTube drama like a million times? I guess, but this time it's different because the big time YouTubers are doing it. The big time YouTubers are doing drama videos, but I thought that the creme de la creme of YouTube creators would never sully themselves with the drama that us rabble post and watch. Well, they're doing it. A bunch of quote unquote YouTube celebrities have been doing drama videos. And other big YouTubers are making responses to the drama videos. And other big shot YouTubers are making anti-drama videos. No, they're the big shots. They don't have to lower themselves to our level. Why are they doing it? Oh, that's real simple. Views. What do you mean? They're making drama videos to keep their view counts up? Yep. I mean, the YouTubers that are currently engaged in the drama have been around for a few years. More than likely, their viewership is starting to drop as their audience gets tired of them or grows up. And you think the drama videos are to boost their views? Of course it is! I mean, a lot of these people have made huge amounts of money off their YouTube careers. If they see their profits start to drop, they'll do anything to keep the views up, including drama. Now, see, that's impossible. Once you reach the lofty peaks of the solid gold YouTube mountain, you stay up there and reap the profits forever. Wrong. No show can just be popular forever, Fundy. TV shows don't, and just like TV shows, when YouTubers notice an audience drop off, they do things to maintain their viewership. Oh, like when the Brady Bunch brought in Cousin Oliver. Exactly. YouTube drama is the Cousin Oliver right now on some of these channels. 
There's nothing wrong with that. They have every right to try to keep their views high. Well, yes and no. It's a little icky to capitalize on drama, especially if it's actual drama. You know, just to keep your views up. Why? That's what local TV news does every day. Yeah, well, we don't do that. That's because nothing dramatic ever happens in this rinky-dink town. Well, howdy y'all, and welcome to the grand opening of the greatest Bible-themed family fun park the world has ever seen. I have worked tirelessly to construct the most accurate Bible arc ever to exist. I tells you, it makes that Ken Ham arc look like a mound of lukewarm puke. So without further ado, let's pull back that curtain and bask in the splendor of Noah's Ark. Now who's ready for an exciting trip to the past? Let me hear an amen. Yar, I thought this be some sort of new strip club. This still doesn't make any sense. Everybody who's anybody knows that being a YouTube monarch is the greatest thing since forever. Why would they need to be worried about views and stuff? Well, it's not like they have much to fall back on when they're no longer popular. I think YouTube is still too young to know that, Jason. It's been around just enough. Take PewDiePie. He is king shit of fuck mountain right now, but as we speak, there are other, newer, younger YouTubers who are getting more and more views. Pretty soon, he'll be seen as old YouTube. Him and Markiplier and some other big shots have already made videos belly aching about how YouTube has changed. It has changed. For them. If the views continue to drop on their channels, what will they do next? PewDiePie's got that reality show. You mean that awful scripted scare PewDiePie thing on YouTube Red? Yeah, that one. There are plenty of YouTube stars that have moved on to fame and fortune. Oh, such as? Um... Fred? The Annoying Orange? Smosh? Never mind. All I'm saying is that a lot of top YouTubers lack the skills needed to transition into mainstream media, so in order to keep their views up, they turn to things like drama. Or changing hosts. And sometimes introducing awful episodic plot threads to their channels that make no sense! Sorry about the piss poor turnout, Sunshine. You want to go out there and kill the only person to attend the grand opening? I brought $200 for panty stuff and money. Now what am I supposed to do with all these $1 bills? I offered them salvation. And what did that public do? Spit in my face. This settles it. The world is corrupt and full of sin, and I am the only man who can set things right. This is what God put me on the earth to do. To reshape the past, to make a perfect present, where I will be important again. Mr. Orff, prime the engines and charge the weapons. It's time we put the fear of God into the idiots of Opinionville. I don't care what you say. YouTube promised fame and fortune. But fame and fortune doesn't last forever. Tastes change. And what we're seeing right now with all these drama videos are the first signs that the mighty are starting to fall. They are starting to see new trends become popular on YouTube and they're scared of it. They ain't scared of nothing. Oh, so it was just a coincidence that all this drama bullshit came up the same time that channels like Drama Alert started to become popular? And so their response is to make a bunch of videos sounding like crotchety old farts calling for an end to YouTube drama and go back to the good old days. No wonder they're losing views. Ah, but not subs. They still got their subs. Millions and millions of subs. Ha! Subs don't mean anything! Oh, so now we're going to tear down another YouTube pillar, are we? Why not? Subscriber counts don't mean crap. View counts do. Subs were important on YouTube when it was first starting out because it was an indicator to the company that people were not only accessing the site, but engaging with it. It was a convenient metric for them. Nowadays, views are what counts. It's views that count to how much money you generate, and considering that the vast majority of views come from people who don't even have a YouTube channel, that's kind of a good thing. There are channels out there with only like 5,000 subs, but they have millions and millions of views on their videos. 
Yeah, but those are clip channels. They don't count. They do to YouTube. So now, some of the big channels are starting to bleed views. I mean, what did they expect? Do you really think that someone who makes 10 to 15 minute videos about video games would have a lifelong career doing it? Yeah, and their videos are so repetitive. People get tired of the same thing over and over again. What are you complaining about? We do the same thing over and over and over again. No, we don't. We have a different topic every week. No, Fundy's kind of right. I mean, what happens all the time here? Fundy does or says something stupid, then we fight, wash, rinse, repeat. Well, sometimes one of us is the one who's stupid. Not nearly enough for my taste. Huh. I guess we're kind of hypocrites complaining about other channels being repetitive when we're guilty of the same thing. I mean, aren't you guys kind of bored with constantly arguing over social issues? Only when I lose the argument, which is frequent. What are you saying, Jason? Should we start making videos about drama? Well, we just kind of did, didn't we? No, I don't want to do drama crap or try to pander to the mainstream YouTube crowd. I just wish that we could do something else. Anything else than being stuck in this garage fighting. All systems are go. Let's fuck this timeline nine ways to Sunday. For I am the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For I beareth not the sword in vain. For I am the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Launch! What is on the lunch menu today in the cafeteria? Please tell me it's chicken salad. I'm sorry, Professor, but I'm afraid that today's lunch offering is chipped beef on toast. Drat. Professor, I've detected a potentially devastating temporal anomaly approaching. You have? Where is it? Approximately 500 feet above downtown Opinionville. Show me on the main viewer. Einstein wept! The vessel appears to be preparing to leave Earth's atmosphere. Activate the Klaxon! What are you guys? Take. Is that a Klaxon? No! Those are trumpets! It's the rapture! Yay! Time for you sinners to experience some of God's wrath! Yeah, that's it! If it was the rapture, then you are still here with us, so you know what that means. Nope, I was wrong! Sounds like a klaxon to me! Let's go outside and see what's going on! Maybe it's the invasion of the crab people I've been warning you guys about! of the fearful and unbelieving, and the, of the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars. Ye shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And the lake that they will burn in will be time itself. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! Did you see that? Did you see what just happened in the last ep? Oh my god! Are we even gonna be alive next week? Is this is our very last outro where we played the podcast? Please just shout out the podcast.
But we might all be destroyed because evil god guy, he uh, decides he's gonna go back in time and wreck all the bunch of stuff and he's gonna be all rompy stompy on time. Uh huh. Can we just, I promise you. Uh, uh, I can't promise anything. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Seriously, I don't know. Will I be dead? No? That is not reassuring! The podcast, please. Okay. Hey, everybody. It's me, Oswald, for now. And uh, now I'm going to pimp out some podcasts. Probably the last time we're going to do this. Please? All right. The first podcast is this one. Let me finish with Jason and Atticus. This is a funny one where they talk about boys' butts all the time. It's 100% boys' butts always. You kick the camera. I didn't... Okay, I kicked the camera. Way to wreck this. Keep going. Fine. The other one is Late City with David, Jason, and they review old-timey movies, and the old-timey movie they review this time is The Fantastic Four 1994. The Fantastic Four? Yes. It's one of my favorite movies. Oh, it's about these four guys. And they're all like, hi, I'm fantastic. And the other guy's like, hey, I'm fantastic too. And the third guy's like, what a coincidence, I'm fantastic. And the last guy's like, I'm fantastic as well. And then they all make out. The end. That is not the movie. What kind of movie is it? A comic book movie from 1994. They didn't make comic book movies in 1994.